There are monsters among us. I mean this quite literally. When I was a kid, I used to play like I was a werewolf. For a while, on any night with a gibbous moon or better, I roamed the neighborhood backyards and howled for hours. Damn near convinced myself I was the real thing, the half-human hound beast from hell. Sometimes, mostly this was to get back at girls, like the time Sally Jameston poured water on my crotch and told the other kids I'd peed myself. I perched up on a brick wall and let go with a prime yowler. Got so I could do that so well even the dogs hid. I don't know. I imagine the whole world was full of monsters back then. It was up to me to save us all. A silly notion, I suppose. A kid's game. Or so I thought at the time. Much later, this had nothing to do with my childhood. I discovered there really are monsters lurking amongst us. I found this out one night in the dark and solitary whiteness of a North Dakota howler. That's what folks up Dakota Way call a killer blizzard. Fair warning, though. That monster wasn't a werewolf, or anything else conjured from my dreams or the great beyond. That monster was something much worse. The flesh and blood kind. A man as real as me. And I killed him. It wasn't the most visceral moment of my life, but it was the most horrible. When I look back on it, though, what stands out most is how very easily things could have come out different. But for that North Dakota howler, the grace of God, and maybe a little ingenuity on my part, I could have been the hunted instead of the hunter, the killed instead of the killer. Sit a spell at the table here and I'll tell you about it. You might want to get yourself a cup of coffee and maybe a Danish too, because this is going to take a while. I'll tell you now, I ain't never told this story to no one, but I need to tell it now. I got to get this thing out of me before, well... Just before is all. You see, I got the brain cancer now. I don't know. The doctor tells me I ain't long for this earth. He refused to put a number on it. Six weeks or three months or a year. But I spent some time with docs when I was younger, and I know how to read them. And that white coat's eyes weren't telling no pretty story. Whatever words came out of his mouth. Besides, I don't know, but I can feel the cancer gnawing at me. Like a rat shredding paper it is. Every day I get up, seems like I'm less who I was just the night before. I don't know. Maybe that rat only chews at night. That'd be fitting. I always did my best work at night. Two. What I got to say took place a long time ago. A whole lifetime. Not mine, you understand. If not, you will. Anyway... It's been three-plus decades, the 1970s, what some folks call the disco decade. I can't quite remember the exact year. I used to know it. You can bet your ass on that, but not anymore. It's one of them secrets that belongs now to the ages. The longer a man lives, the more secrets he accumulates. I'll tell you now I have secrets. Every man does. And most of them I'll take to my grave. But I've lived a long time, and with the brain rat eating away at me, I ain't so sharp anymore. And so some of my secrets I've lost already. It's a sad part of aging. Maybe the saddest part of getting old, to admit that. So it was the time of Saturday Night Fever and Mirror Balls. Either Jerry Ford or Jimmy Carter was in the White House that year. I don't know. It wasn't that crook Dick Nixon, though. I remember Tricky Dick had already been pardoned when all this happened. And Elvis had left the building. I know that. I was in a McDonald's drive through when that particular little piece of death came over the radio. I had pulled up to the window and just paid when it came on how the king had upchucked in his toilet and probably choked on his own spew. The summer of 75 or 76, I think. Maybe later. I don't know. Look it up if you need to know exact. I do remember I ate my fish sandwich just the same. I ain't no Elvis fan, but after he checked out of the Heartbreak Hotel for that last time, he was all over the damn place. I spent a lot of time in my car back then and I couldn't hardly turn on the radio without being told I weren't nothing but a hound dog or being asked if and I was lonesome tonight in that sultry three-dollar voice of his. In those days, I made a pretty penny as a traveling salesman. I didn't do door-to-door exactly, not in the regular sense of it anyway. I went hospital to hospital. That was before computers and cell phones and that damned internet thing. I don't know, but back then a man could be a man and make an honest day's pay and look another man in the face and shake his hand. You ask me, that's the only way to do business. A man knows who he's dealing with when he can look him in the face. 
It's the eyes that tell. The eyes tell everything if you're prepared to see them.